Have these thoughts ever crossed your mind? Why am I spending so many hours practicing hundreds of data structure problems? Will I ever use these concepts in my day-to-day -day work? If I'm never going to invert a binary search tree in my software life, why are they asking me this during interview? Shouldn't the interviews test me based on my development skills rather than DSA? So what's the point of learning all this? Why and how companies use DSA as a benchmark? Hi, I'm Ritwik. And today we'll decode the importance of DSA for the interview and how much preparation is actually required to nail your interviews. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you're the first one to know whenever a new video comes out in the Decoded Careers in Tech series. DSA is all about solving a critical problem with a logical approach, meaning you identify the right set of tools and apply them to solve a given problem. In software lingo, people may also refer to this as PSDS, problem solving and data structures. Companies commonly use it during interviews to determine how good of a software engineer can you be. Let's understand what is good and bad about this practice. And more importantly, what should you be doing? Companies use DSA interviews to test you in two ways. One is through online screening and two, personal interview. Though in both cases, you as a candidate are going to write code to solve common DSA problems. There are some nuances that are worth understanding. Let's get to the bottom of that. Let's say you have an opening in your team. 500 people apply for the role and your recruiter helps you shortlist 100 candidates based on resume match. However, now you can call only 20 candidates for an interview. How do you decide who to call? This is the most common dilemma companies face. One of the easiest and most objective ways is to conduct an online coding assessment on platforms like HackerRank. This helps to further filter out candidates and call the top 20 for an interview. Let's understand why this works beautifully for you and the company. The company spends less than one to two hours setting up the problem on HackerRank and they get automated leaderboard results from the platform. At the same time, you as a candidate spend two hours or less of your time on the coding assessment to go to the next stage. Imagine an alternative scenario where coding assessments don't exist. Companies would ask all candidates to build a project that would take less than 12 hours. They would then have to build automatic assessments to evaluate the project, which is an additional 20 plus hours of work for their engineers. And at the end, candidates who get rejected would have to spend 12 or more hours of their precious time on an assignment that is not useful anymore. Now you see how and why coding assessments are used to shortlist candidates. Through these tests, it's fairly easy for companies to evaluate your coding abilities and your problem solving skills. However, you might be wondering why some tests are just so impossible to crack. Well, here's the real reason behind it. Companies don't want all candidates to have the same score because then it becomes tough for them to shortlist again. So when there are two or more candidates competing for the same role, these tests are designed to be harder such that there's a distinct rank for every candidate. So. Do you agree that online assessments are a good way to shortlist candidates? If you have another opinion, do let us know in the comments. We'd love to know your perspective on this. And if you have made this far in the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button before we move on to the next part. If you make it through the coding assessment round, your next challenge would be to pass the in-person interview rounds. Apart from coding ability and DSA knowledge, the in-person rounds aim to assessing a few more specific skills. Like, are you able to ask the right questions while solving the problem? How many types of solutions are you able to come up with for the same problem? What kind of trade-offs are you making to choose the best solution? Interviews dig deep to see how you do from these aspects of problem solving. And for debugging, they're mostly concerned with how you debug your code when you face issues. Are you approaching it in a structured fashion? One thing to note here is, that well-prepared interviewers don't usually ask standard lead code problems. They give you more realistic problems to solve and see how you approach them. Even if the questions are hard, they aren't expecting you to give the final solution. They just want to see how you are approaching it. In other words, in online assessments, companies are looking only at your final output. In personal interviews, the journey you took to arrive to the solution is considered equally important. Now that we have seen the fundamental ideas behind asking DSA problems during interviews, let's look at how effectively they are evaluating your skills for the job. DSA interviews give a fair estimate of your cognitive abilities, problem solving skills, coding abilities, and debugging skills. This is during a personal interview like we saw earlier. With this perspective in mind, how can you make the most of your DSA interviews? Given the number of resources available to help you with DSA problems asked in interviews, it's easy to get lost in the rabbit hole of spending crazy number of hours practicing 400 to 500 problems before your interview. Slowly, it also started becoming a proxy of how prepared you are more than how good of a problem solver you are. Preparedness is equally important attribute companies look for. So companies keep bumping up the difficulty of these DSA problems during interviews to the extent they can't differentiate between multiple candidates who have solved 400 
plus problems. This is another reason why DSA interviews have become five to six times more difficult than what is necessary for you to be a good software developer. So how much should you prepare prior to an interview? Before we get into the details of what topics you have to pick and prepare for your upcoming interviews, let us know that you're enjoying this video by clicking that thumbs up icon. And once you have done that, let's continue. If you're going to interview for a front-end developer role, you can focus on topics like arrays, strings, maps, simple implementation problems. If you're interviewing with companies for backend roles, the list of topics is slightly longer for you. Try the level by level approach when you're practicing problems on these topics. That is, first get comfortable with arrays, strings, linked list and simple implementation problems. Then move on to hash, queue, stack and trees application. And finally, cover graph, DP and recursion. Regardless of how good you are at development, you most definitely need to work on improving your problem solving skills to get past the interview rounds. You can't escape it. You have seen why companies adopt DSA tests to shortlist candidates and they are surely not going to change their selection process in many years to come. If you're feeling overwhelmed or don't know where to start your prep, we have got you covered in our DSA preparation for interviews video. It explains everything from how many problems to solve, where to find the problems, and what topics you need to focus on based on the CTC you are aiming for. Check it out. I've added the link to it in the description. Hope this video has helped you appreciate why companies test your DSA skills for a software development job. If you think you learned something new, don't keep it to yourself and share this video to help others. And stay tuned for the next video in the Decoded series.